This video is on the creation of a garden bed. This is my latest bed I'm working on, although I did start it, say, a season ago by putting some uh, agave leaves in the bottom and then covering it with some wood. And then I built the fence, which I'll walk around and look at in just a second. This is basically a hole in a river. So you'll see I terrace the sides to do like passive watering when it rains you know in the summer we get monsoons here so i made i built this is what i built this, the river comes through here the first structure i actually built was right here this was a long time ago two seasons ago i built this bridge right here just out of wood and then i put a lot of rocks on top and then i put dirt and it's got caverns and such in it and i built some little drain hole that pops out right here but it, um, the drain hole worked for the first like season or two and it comes out from under here and I, I thought to give it extra drainage, but it didn't need it. There's still, sometimes cracks become available, but this is good because water will go into there and then seep into the ground is what the whole idea of this little dam structure was. But then I started terracing everything and it worked so well as these terraced raised beds work so well, I just kept building them. So let's go take a look at the bottom of it. So this one I built last season, and as you'll see, it's the same brambly. This is a live tree that I gave us a lot of fruit last year, so I want to keep that one in good shape. Let me see, get a good idea. So this is a maybe you know at its depth right there where it started eroding. It is the most depth. It's like a three foot tall thing. I'll probably add a couple extra branches onto this to make it deeper. But right now my goal is to start filling it, so I want to get the first layer done, which is made up of mostly the bigger branches. So like that tree, for example, I'm gonna cut that up and use that main thing. There's a couple branches over there that are pretty big. In here, I have a couple that are, you know, moderate, but whatever I have on hand, I use the biggest trees as the first layer, like a Hugo culture bed. You start with timber that's uncut, not wood chips, nothing like that, just timber. So this is kind of a low one, but um, in for a river, it's gonna be fine. But I, I will probably add another, I don't know, so I'll add some more height on it. And then as the season goes, you layer it a little bit during the season with some kind of mulch or something, it gets deeper and deeper. So I had some native grass that I cut. So I made kind of the dam part with the native grass last season, and it's been okay. I built, I built this like a season ago, but it's been, you know, say I built it in fall and it's winter now. Um, it is not, doesn't have too much lower layers. I did put a little wood and some grass down there just to kind of fill in, but it was a rocky riverbed before. And I don't know if um, one of the earlier, um, if I explained this earlier, but there is a, we're recovering the landscape here because from about this tree here, up this whole hillside here, over to here, and all this included up to the riverbank, was burned garbage. The previous residents a long, long time ago, before this place was abandoned, or somebody else came here and did this, I'm not sure, but they burned lots of garbage, like anything. They, there was no, <laughs> there's, so you'll see a lot of things, like there's a can right there. Garbage does protrude through, even though I've been mulching and layering and trying to, you know, make these little hills. It does pop through still, but this is part of the recovery process. And it's mostly ash, which actually makes the plants that were growing here in the season were incredibly uh, robust. So I guess potassium is low in the soil here. Um, so when you burn, you know, you have ash. So it was a big pile of ash that smelled a little funny. So um, uh, we cleaned the river like several times through several years. And then uh, after a big storm, this filled in with a lot of dirt. So it just covered most of the debris in the river itself. And then I built the lower bed right here earlier. That's past our little fish tank there. This bed was my most recent bed besides this. And it's still not even really done. I could add more layers to it. There's some plants down there, but it's mostly like a bed to keep plants alive through the winter. And then we'll pull some of those trees out and stuff. But this is an apple tree right next to here. So we have an anchor tree that's going to kind of be a nurse tree for this immediate area right here at least. But this will be great as a maybe greens or some type of lettuce or something. This, my my first season in a any, any bed usually really does well because it's all loose and it's still biologically getting active, but you can feed it a little bit with some natural fertilizer, you know, organic stuff. But um, it really takes a season or two to start like curing out and getting really good. But 
first layer is the biggest timbers I can find. So I'll put that. Let me just see if this. Oh yeah, it did fill in a bit here. We really got infill in the river, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to build soil and stop erosion is one of my goals here. So you can see the structure right here of this previous dam. This I built this a long time ago. And I kind of weaved the wood together a little bit, so I didn't really need even sticks holding this one back. And I just buried it, and the water just chose to go over it instead of destroying it, so it worked. And, you know, I, there was timbers under there going all the way back even to there. But I wasn't building it as like a Hugo culture bit. It was more like a timber clay structure to slow the water down, and it worked. Uh, you know, two seasons in a row, it was, did great. It even added about 10 inches over here near that area. There's about 10 inches going up the river that was added, 10 to 12 inches of dirt that just got stopped by the grow box here, by that little bed there. <clears throat> and so this, I'm gonna commence this project, then I'll take some photos, maybe do an update once I'm getting further. But I'm doing this to kind of share how I build beds here. And this is, you know, maybe not the first step. You can see a lot of stuff. I put a lot of branches already in there, but that's just the dam. So the bed itself is gonna start here mostly, be timbers, then smaller sticks, then a lot of nitrogen material. Then I'll probably put some compost, some worm castings. I'll mix a little bit of native stuff. The stuff on this side of the river is decent. The other one's kind of clay and weird. I'll mix a little bit of native stuff in it, and then I'll mix things like peat moss, which I know it's people say about the sustainability, but man, that stuff helps out here because it's kind of too much clay. So that and, you know, some river sand and some different component fertilizers. This year with this bed, I'm going to add stuff into it as I build it, I believe. I, um, you know, like crab meal, neem meal, alfalfa meal, things like this. But these are all purchased things. So I try to use mostly what I have here. But to augment, I know I want to get this bed going right away. So I don't want to, you know, overdose with some kind of later on fertilizer. I'd rather have it in the soil if I, I can get the components quick enough but this this will be a really active and primary bed this season i can tell because it's wide it's wide it's the depth i'll even have to have a walkway or two because it's so deep usually my beds are reach in so i could like for example this one here and you go to the upper tier one and you can walk on it and reach everything and one like this is just hand reachable. These are easy reacher from the upper bottom part. This is reachable from both sides. It's because you wanna, if you're growing greens like that over there, you wanna trim it all the time and eat it. Um, that's what we do. We just keep it going. If you can see that little stump right there, this one this one has been, boy, we that arugula has been giving us a lot, but we have, you know, 10 more like that. So we just keep nipping it. Then it grows back. We mowed it back pretty dramatically. Just, just recently so it looks bald or whatever but you know we have more so <clears throat> um, you just kind of move on around and what I think is interesting is I built each of these garden beds separately and uh, sometimes with completely separate materials and so they have a different biotic in them to some degree and it's nice to get a salad bowl from one bed and then another bed because they're each kind of their own thing it's really they have personality and they give the plants a certain thing it's interesting the shallower beds like these though, see these were made in haste, but again, did very well. They're shallow, they only have, you know, maybe a foot at most of really good soil on top and it's mixed with a lot of native stuff. I didn't supplement it a lot. The trees didn't grow super big, you know, like that's an apple tree that didn't, this is an apple tree that was even younger but grew way bigger. Um, this being because it was part of that flood and all the rocks came down and kind of gave a layer of clay over the good soil that's down below. And it protected it actually from the hot days, which was really important. And it didn't really have, there was a couple beans and squash growing around here, but it didn't have too much competition. So it really, in this is a very native soil. It doesn't have a big bed. I just dug a hole for it. Very much native soil, but it performed very well. This one here, I think, you know, there's, I had, tons of tomatoes growing on it it was also uh you know competing with those two trees behind it that are native uh it was kind of struggling i didn't feed it a lot you know so it, but it still has leaves i mean this is we've been getting 29 27 29 most other trees lost their leaves so it was insulated in some way through most of the first part of the winter so as you can see we're just we're trying to use the natural environment in a way that will assist what we're doing but also add you know just kind of feed it on its own and that's what this does once you kickstart a hugo culture bed it just kind of does it on its own now once 
um, to be honest, my my take on the whole thing is these aren't standard hugel culture beds. They're in a river uh, or terraced at the side of the river, and they are capturing some water, but not all of it usually. And it's an idea that there's drainage and air getting in. And these branch, my system with the branches allows lots of air to penetrate. And here too, I'm not gonna pack it down really, for example, I'll put some timbers over this, but I'm not gonna pack this down. And there'll, there'll be, until it settles out over maybe a whole year or more, there'll be lots of air in here. And so the first round gets a lot of like energized uh, air to the roots, which leads to a much healthier plant or garden life. Um, and then it also leads to the microbiotic in the soil being alive also and really healthy. No musty weird stuff in the soil. It's all life that gives positively, or at least is part of the overall ecosystem that's doing the right stuff. Now, you know, there's, when you do some nature stuff, like there's just all these local beetles, there's a lot of grasshoppers here. There's like weevils and weird stuff too, I think, I'm not sure, but. We got tons of bugs so far since we've been here, but to be honest, the worst bugs are always when we buy a plant at some big box store and bring it home. They're just infected with stuff. And it's because they're, a lot of them come from the Central Valley of California where like that's bugs galore. You know, they spray, they all die, and then they come back in force and they come, you know, move around. But it's really like we're, we're in some biological war with bugs and it makes us sick by doing it because obviously the spray and all that stuff. But besides that, these bugs become like super bugs. So some of the stuff that comes out here, boy, these things are going for it. They're not supposed to live through the winter and they're still like alive. You know, we have some ones that, uh, like a cabbage aphid or something that's still on some cabbages. Like that's, you know, been, it's been in our garden for like a year through the summer, the winter, the you know, season, it's not supposed to make it. It's like a super bug that we brought here. It was, it's not a native to this area. So what, what I'm getting at is when we do a system like this, we give the land the opportunity to kind of balance out this uh, chemical assault, to getting it more back into nature. Like some of these plant seeds and things that we've used, I and mean, we were not really particular, so some of it could have been GMO'd or something, we don't know what it is really, or chemicals used to grow the initial plant, but we're doing our best to make it the naturalist environment possible in the soil for, you know, whatever life form lives here. And, you know, mycelium's a good one. Some of these beds have a layer of mushroom compost uh, in them, like a big thick layer, like it's, you know, seven inch or something that was basically mushroom compost that took a while to break down, but boy, the worms just love it. So every time you picked a chunk up that wasn't, you know, done yet, there's a worm in it eating it, you know? And besides that, we have all sorts of mushrooms popping up. And it'll probably happen again this year when it, in the rainy season, you know? So I just keep talking here. I, I gotta get to work actually. <laughs> it's getting later in the day. There's a nice view. Yeah, so this particular bed though is going to is going to um, be over several, uh, I don't know, days to weeks even. I built it, I built it a season ago. So it's not gonna be instant, but we'll slowly build this bed out. So this coming spring, or even this coming like late winter where it starts warming up, I'm gonna start planting it. We'll even put a couple trees in here probably and get it really going. And I was trying to sort of save this landscape here with all the garbage and ash and all this weird like wires pop up, just weird stuff, you know, that you don't want in your, so I've decided to, instead of excavating it and doing some hardcore, you know, removal, what I've done is just plant on it and try to, you know, cover it basically. So it doesn't, you know, it's no longer really an issue. And you don't, it's not covering it so it goes away with like some soil or something. This is covering it with like biotic material that'll break down and absorb all the problems that's in there, you know?